Hello, welcome to Polk Salad. We are going to have a bounty of conversation about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, and that is reusing, repurposing, recycling, refurbishing, reselling, or restoring things here in our community. I was surprised when I got started on this project just how many people we have in the community involved in this very effort. Some of them do it as part of their jobs. Some of them do it just because it's who they are. Some of them do it to share uh, an outlet for their creative abilities and talents. Some of them do it just because they can't stand to see things go to waste. Today, we'll have three guests with us, uh, all very different. We have one from uh, Western Oregon University, we have one from Monmouth, and we have one who is indirectly from Independence. And uh, stay tuned with us and you'll hear some very interesting stories by some very wonderful people. Good morning, welcome back to Polk Salad. Today we have with us Katie Kimmy, who is actually from Cincinnati, Ohio. Katie's the manager at an engineering firm in Cincinnati, but her grandmother, Eleanor Harvey, is an Independence resident, and Katie has come to help her grandmother celebrate her 90th birthday. So welcome, Katie. Thank you. And happy birthday, Eleanor Harvey, from all of us here at Poke Salad. So Katie's here to tell us about a couple of the projects that she does. It's not her profession, but she has this passion for reusing, repurposing, recycling, using things that come to her. And they're kind of exciting. So why don't you tell us about those? Tell me about the one about the tree that fell in your in the yard. yard. <laughs> yeah, my husband and I had a tree branch that fell in the yard. And rather than cut it up and burn it for firewood or something like that, I actually had him cut it into small little rounds. Um, and we used them for coasters out on our patio. So wow. I mean, just anything like that, rather than waste it, right. use it. And so he must have a saw or some sort of thing that he did. And yeah, you he just chopped that thing up and made coasters. Yep, he just cut them into maybe about an inch thick because it was a little hard to control um, the movement of the saw. Mm. And then he took a sander just to sand down to make it smooth. And we have a great there set of coasters. Oh, and I yeah. bet people love them, right? They do. They're they ask original, about them. Right? Where yeah. can I get those? Yeah, <laughs> right so. out of your yard. <laughs> well, in the yard. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's such a good idea. Yeah, now tell us about the other thing you were talking to me about this morning. Well, um, we we were driving down the road getting ready to go somewhere and I stopped the car and so he stops the car because I had seen an old dresser that somebody had out on the curb um, knocked on the door made sure that you right. know it was actually in fact something I could take right. um, took it um, chopped it up and I actually have refinished it and repainted pieces of it because I made little picture frames out of them you made so you, so you didn't use it as a dresser no you used it as something totally different. I just wanted the wood and the hardware off of so it. So when you saw the dresser, that you didn't have in mind, I'm going to refinish this as a dresser. Nope, didn't need a dresser. So how do you make a picture frame from a dresser? You just cut the pieces of wood into whatever shapes or sizes or lengths that you need, and then you just kind of either piece them together with little finishing nails or glue, wood uh -huh. glue. Um, mm -hmm. Then you can paint them, personalize them. Um, you can even use them as old chair rail if you wanted to make something that you could mount on the walls. Wow. Yeah. And then what do you do with the hardware? The hardware you can just repurpose as either something that they could use as a hanger mm -hmm. or um, you can just make it as a decoration on the frame. So you can just take a strip of wood and put a, pe a handle for, mm -hmm. for instance on there mm -hmm. and then just hang it on your wall and yeah. use it to hang anything from. Yep. Yeah. And do you paint them colors or do you leave the wood? I guess it depends. It depends. On, depends on the shape of the wood. Yeah, it depends on what you find. and. Um, it's really just up to you and your imagination and um, creativity. So do you have to have a ton of material, I mean uh, tools to do that? Like no. just a saw? Just a saw What kind much. of saw? Um, my husband used a hand saw. But when really? We, yeah, he cu to cut just the pieces hand saw. off. Yep. Wow. And then he takes a little jigsaw, which mm -hmm. is just one that can do the more detailed work to actually make the cuts um, so that the wood's kind of you can fit it together and piece it. That so. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now where do you get this inspiration or how do you how can you look at a dresser? This is what amazes me about the whole repurposing recycling craze that's I'm so grateful is happening. Um, that people can look at something and see something or things totally different. 
Well, usually for me, I've got a project or something on the back burner, and I'm, I'm thinking about how am I going to do this? How can I make it unique? How can I make it something special? Um, so for me, it starts with the idea. And then I know, for in, in the example of the wood frames, mm -hmm. making the picture frames, mm -hmm. I knew I needed picture frames. I didn't want to go to the store, buy something off the shelf, so I kind of had my wheels turning. What could I use? And so I was looking for old pieces of wood or pallets or something, mm -hmm. and I wasn't finding what I was looking for, but I saw mm. this old dresser with a neat wood grain, and I was like, that's what I want. That is the wood. And do you, do you cut them, do you put glass on them then? I mean, how, how, what do, I, I'm not picturing the frame. You basically just make the frame, mm -hmm. and then um, you, would ha you can hang whatever you want in the middle of it. So if you had um, a canvas, you would just kind of hang oh, the frame around the canvas to kind of make it and because you're making it, you mm -hmm. can make it to fit the size of whatever it is you're mounting mm -hmm. on the wall. That's yep. brilliant. Have yep. you always done those things since you were little, or is that just sort of a new hobby, or how does that work for you personally? I've always liked to create things, um, whether it's painting, or whether it's something with wood, or whether it's, it just doesn't matter. For mm -hmm. me, I, I just like the creativity of mm -hmm. it, and if I can find an interesting or unique material that I could reuse in some way, or repurpose in some way, that just excites me even more because you're thinking outside the box. So That's I think true. maybe I'm just wired that way. <laughs> Do you have other examples or little things that you have in your house or favorite things that you like to do? I think um, some of my favorites have been, I make wreaths out of burlap. So you can take old burlap and kind of bunch it up. Um, you buy you mean one burlap of those, like a sack? Yeah. Really? Cut up an old burlap sack, a sack and then you can um, just bunch it up and make it kind of look like clouds almost. And you can make a wreath, make a neat bow out of it. You can dye it if you want really? to. Can you dye burlap? You can. How do you do that? You just would buy um, a fabric dye or something, um, and then you just kind of follow the package instructions, really? and you have whatever color you're looking for. So burlap and dye, mm -hmm. and you pretty much have a wreath. Yeah. And do you, do you mount it on, like you can buy foam or whatever at mm -hmm. Goodwill or wherever. Yeah, you can or just. old straw wreaths. I see those all the time. Yeah, whatever you can find. <gasps> So and, you can make it neat. And you can probably make a really pretty big ribbon out of that burlap, mm -hmm. I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, so Very you can do fun. things like that, and you change it out seasonally, whatever you're thinking. Right, because you can dye it. Yeah. Oh, so whatever you want to do. That is very, very cool. I never saw that. Yeah. Never have seen that. That's good. So you just keep doing that stuff all the time because you are an office manager. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I work At with an engineers. engineering firm. <laughs> <laughs> I need some creativity in my life. People who think in the box, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, so I, that's kind of my outlet outside of work is mm -hmm. um, just coming up with projects and um, just kind of letting my creat creativity go a little. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of that going on here in Monmouth and Independence, which is what, as I said earlier, we're focusing uh, this next few uh, shows here at Polk Salad on people who do repurpose, who do recycle, who do reuse. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's trendy, but I think it's trendy, a trend that's not going to go away. I think your generation, for instance, seems to um, be a lot more forward thinking about where we're headed with the earth and materialism and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So, And you're kind of, for me, I'm coming off of the generation that you know, went through the Depression, mm -hmm. and my parents both were in the Great Depression, and they were very much affected by that as kids. Mm -hmm. So save everything, keep everything, everything has a use, and many more than one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of nice that we're seeing this, this new trend where people are using their creativity and also using the stuff that we have right here, yeah. right? And it's it feels incredible. good, right? Yeah, it is. It feels good. And um, speaking of the Depression, your grandma's going to be 90 years old. She is. Yeah, that today is, is actually her 90th birthday. Today is the birthday. Mm -hmm. And so you uh, came from Cincinnati. Yes, we did. And you do. met up with your family here. Mm -hmm. And your grandma lives in Independence. She does. And you guys are going to wine taste while you're here, too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of people come to Polk County to taste wine. We have some very good uh, outlets for that. Oh, I'm so excited. thank you. Thank you for visiting Polk County. Well, Happy thank you. birthday to your grandma. And thank, thank you. you for joining us here this morning. Well, thank you very much, Terry. It's been a pleasure. Good. Thank you, and uh, stay tuned because we're going to be back with more recycling, repurposing, and regenerating. Hello. Welcome back to Polk Salad, where we are talking about repurposing, recycling, reusing, regenerating items that you have 
into things that possibly you never thought they could be. And so today we have with us Tony Walbridge, who actually has made uh, a business out of doing this, but that's not how it all got started. But I'll let her tell you the story. So good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Tony, for being here. You're more than welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad. Yeah. So tell me a little bit. You told me a little bit about how you got started just taking things and reusing them. Uh, I started at a very early age. My parents moved to California with just us kids. Uh, I have a set of twin brothers. And uh, they had nothing. They had no jobs. They had no anything. So they lived out of a park and their station wagon for a little while. So my mother got very frugal. Mm -hmm. But again, her parents also went through uh, the depression as long as my, yeah, right. as well as my dad's parents. And uh, they got really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have yeah. to, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so my mom did a lot of goodwilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when goodwills were fairly, because you figured this was, you know, 64, 65. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother would go and get skirts, and that's how she made our clothes. And, uh, and she saved every penny she could get her hands on to go on. And uh, my dad's a portrait painter. Is he? Yes, and my mother turned out, uh, eventually became a, a singer sewing teacher. So that's actually where a lot of crafting has been in my house. So you have that creative sort of background yes, as yes. well as frugal. Yes. Which is perfect. For yes, I'm very. Yeah, my mother always kept us busy in the summer and uh, always doing something crafty mm -hmm. in our rooms. And uh, that's pretty much how it started. Just taking mm -hmm. things that were there and learning My how mom to took a lot. Them. What she did for uh, the cans the uh, coffee cans and everything, she would spray paint them and use them for storage. Uh, she the used big the, coffee cans yes. with the lids that, yes. yeah. She made canisters out of them. Uh, it's also back when contact paper was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new thing, Everybody, right? Yeah, everybody did. You know, you, you uh -huh. took uh, old furniture and put contact paper on it and, right. and made it. So it's always been, and then uh, I started making wind chimes out of cans, oh, spray painting them. And uh, just old furniture, repurposing it. I love yard art. I do a lot of yard art. Just making things to set in your yard? Yes, yes. Just I've uh, spray painted a bunch of uh, old yard tools and put them all around my yard. I've got a chalkboard to one that's just on the side of uh, my door to put messages. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've taken old gates and screwed them onto the side of my house. Really? <laughs> I've taken old pots and pans and I've arranged them as, and I've had little, little niche uh, tchotchkes and some plants and stuff in them. Oh, and, how fun. Uh, old enamelware. I love old enamelware. That's another good one. Is that like the camping stuff? Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, actually they used it in their homes a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes in all the it's white and red is my favorite. Oh, right. And then I do have some of the newer mm -hmm. enamel wear. Uh, I s drill holes in the bottom and I put dirt and I use them for pots outside. Oh, I bet that's because so it, colorful. It is. And the terracotta just falls apart. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't in make it through the free. Special. Yes. Mm -hmm. I learned that because in the Bay Area, things like this don't happen. <laughs> that's interesting. So the enamel wear just lasts. It does. You don't have to replace that, your pots. No. Oh, and I where like do you that. find stuff like that? Uh, Second-hand stores, mostly a lot of them have gone. Um, I do, a friend of mine does a lot of garage sailing. Ah. So she has a list of stuff that I like, and mm -hmm. she picks it up for mm -hmm. me. Uh, silverware is another one. I've made uh, dresser handles out of silverware. Oh, have you? I've made hooks out of silverware, wind chimes. Um, I, I love to go on Pinterest. I don't know if I yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get a lot. Find those things yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And so you brought something to make I the did. studio. I Tell did. Tell us about this little item. This is ha usually hangs um, in the front of my house. And I took my husband had, uh, and his friend had the, all these old gloves. Because what do you do with those gloves? Right? Yeah, he just throws them away. Right. So I, uh, I filled them with uh, some stuffing. Uh -huh. And then uh, I painted spring on it with a stencil. And then I used old safety pins 
an old piece of jute I had and then some burlap. And just and, and then yeah. you string it outside. And them. I do. Yeah. Oh, and you have these cute little ribbons yeah. at the end. Uh-huh. There's little <gasps> little flowers. Just made out of leftover fabric, it looks that, like. That uh, the red is a little girl's apron and the yellow was just a scrap of fabric I had. And then the burlap is an old purse. <gasps> the inside is of an that old purse. Right. Mm -hmm. The inside of an old yeah, purse. The inside I mean, of you the, use yes. everything. I use everything. The inside yes. of an old purse. Yes. Oh, this I is use adorable. Everything. And it just looks like, yeah, that's what we do in the spring. We put our yeah. gloves on and yep. work in the yard. Yeah. <gasps> and you just have this hanging out by your door mm -hmm. in the spring. Mm -hmm. Just this spring, and then I have something <sighs> for summer, and I always change out. Isn't that adorable? Uh, Christmas is really great. Oh, I yeah. bet. I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Christmas now, I've is fun. met your mom, who's completely charming. Thank you. <laughs> and um, talk to her about some of the things that y'all do. And I know that you have told me that. You started, you made so much stuff that your husband said, okay, yes. you need an outlet for this. Yes, we used to do this uh, in the 90s. We went to the flea markets and then the craft fairs and everything. There was a little group of us, and uh, we would sell our wares. And then uh, we had a family uh, situation happen where we could stop, and it got expensive. My mm -hmm. mother came down with cancer. Oh, my. And uh, we didn't do it for a long time. Well, then it got expensive between getting the table, renting the space, and, and that. It got tiring of always. Mm -hmm. You know, our things were breaking. Mm -hmm. So my, uh, my, we were sitting around one day over coffee, you know, whining about our sorrow. And my husband said, you know, we have that little, there's a little building we can, you ladies, go to it there. I said, yes. Really? Yes. Because you actually, you actually have a lawn care business. I do. So I you're mow out lawns. mowing lawns and doing all yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. This is just like this is my are. My, yeah. <laughs> this is actually my future retirement. <laughs> I wanted something fun to do. Yeah. Uh, and most of what I love to do, uh, I sit at a yeah. sewing machine right. or I, I sit and do this. Because lawn, yes. you're not sitting when yeah. you're doing no. the lawn. Right. No. So you had this completely full-time lawn care yes. maintenance job. Yes. And then you now have this little shop that mm -hmm. where you and your mom and some other people. Yes, a few of my friends. We also, we, uh, what one doesn't do, another does. I have a friend that does a lot of her, her um, paperwork, scrapbooking. Mm. And I have another one that uh, uh, does gourds. Oh. And then another friend of mine is growing the gourds for the gal that does the oh, gourds. Oh, I love it. Yes. And, and I was, um, your little shop, uh, the, the outlet I call it, I think of it as a place for you to get rid of all this stuff. You make. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. I have a lot of people that donate things to oh, us. Because when they find out that I repurpose things, uh, a couple days ago I had a gal drive up, give me all the stuff in her trunk because she didn't want to give it to the Goodwill anymore. Oh, Because right. they've gotten very expensive. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. so that you take this stuff and you just reuse it? I do. Mm -hmm. And your shop is called This and That. It's on Highway 99 yes. in Monmouth, right? Yes. And I heard that, um, I think your mom told me that you guys will do things like a special for people if they want you oh, to yes. make a special wreath orders. or if they want yes. you to do something. Yes. And the other day I was in there yes. and, and uh, you were telling me about a woman who brought this beautiful sort of Asian looking. Oh, she came in yesterday, Beverly. Yes, she brought her little thing, her, her yeah, it was an Asian uh, vase, and it needed, uh, my mom called it tired. Oh. <laughs> it needed some refreshing. So she, Beverly came in yesterday, and my mom's going to be working on that for her. Putting flowers Putting or whatever. Putting flowers, refreshing it. Some of the gravel has come off. Right, and, because it's and, really a an open container, it is. like it's, beautifully yeah. enameled mm -hmm. or whatever on the side. Yes. And this woman, Beverly, I guess, who mm -hmm. brought it in, it means a lot to her. It does. It was her aunt's, and it's very sentimental. And uh, mom's already picked out the flowers. Oh, she went out yesterday. I love that. Yeah, started picking out the flowers and started getting the idea on how it should uh, mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. And because she liked it as is, it just needed to be uh -huh. refreshed. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it is. It's a nice. It's a beautiful. It is. Yeah, it's it is actually very pretty. And I yeah. love it that it's meaningful to mm -hmm. her. I like I mean I'm for me my mantra is sort of if it's meaningful or beautiful I keep it. If it isn't I yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> or useful. <laughs> yeah. Mom so. and I also donate to a lot of uh, causes. Uh, oh. We donate to, to PCL, oh, good. and we've donated to the Panther Auction, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, you come in for a donation at Kings Valley School. Oh, how new, wonderful. That uh, they're having silent auctions. We've made uh, things to donate to them. So you're really, you're taking stuff from the community, and you're I giving am. it back. Yes. 
Yes. You're just taking all this stuff mm -hmm. that would be thrown away, yes. end up in the landfill. Yes. And you're actually repurposing it and giving it back to the community. Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoy doing it. It's I'm a lot so, of fun. I'm so happy you do yeah. <laughs> because I love to. Yeah, we've taken furniture that's been sitting off the side of the road and, and uh, rebuilt it. My mother, if it can be cut with a saw, my mother owns it. <laughs> She cuts it, yes. <laughs> well, I, I have gotten into the habit now of taking my grandkids for their birthday or whatever into shops or to people like you who repurpose. Oh, yeah, and I get let them, a lot of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get Western students in there a lot. I do. Yes, I do. Because mm -hmm. they, this generation. Yes, they're learning really, to repurpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And uh, it's, they're finding it fascinating to, I took an old phone wall phone that you cranked that a friend gave to me and I took it apart and I made different things like out of the uh, talking piece I made a, a vase I glued <laughs> it onto uh, some other piece of wood and then I kind of shabby chic it what they call nowadays yes. with that white and, and then I make the burlap flowers oh and my goodness. everything and I sold that and then the magneto inside I shabby chic it and I sold it my and goodness I made a, the cabinet I did the same thing with that and sold it so yeah and mm. so I I heard that we get a lot of international students here at Western. We do. I, which I love. I love getting them here. And yes. they don't want to, especially the ones from China, yeah. they don't want to buy things from China, right? No, they don't. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh, made in China bad. <laughs> <laughs> they just come to you and say, give us something that we can, made in America. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So even if I can take pieces and stuff, yeah. It is mm -hmm. so wonderful. And so... Would you uh, mind sh sharing your phone number? With no, us so I don't mind at all. Call you if they want to ask about giving stuff to repurpose sure, or about I don't mind at getting all. you to make a special mm -hmm. project. Tell us your phone number. Uh, my phone number is 503-559-4179. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you because I was in that that workshop you guys have the other day there on 99. It's across from Dairy Queen, isn't it? It's Kitty Corner from Dairy okay. Queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called This and That. Yeah. And um, there were there were the cutest um, garlands. Uh, they look like red flowers for Fourth of July yes. with white. And yes. You told me they were made. They out. were made out of uh, toilet paper rolls. Yes. I couldn't believe that. Yes. A friend of mine and her husband got together and made those. It looked like something you'd find in anthropology. Yeah. That, that I, yes. chic store. All that know? Holt stuff. Yeah. I love that mm -hmm. stuff. That's another one I'm, I'm getting in, starting to get into now. So. It, it, it was just amazing. Yeah. I must have 35, 40 projects going on at once. And I bounce. I flit from here and there just to keep me busy. Well, keeps good. me going. I it, like it. I'm so happy you do. Yeah, and I'm yeah. so happy you're doing it here. Yeah. yeah. And more and more people are finding out about what you and your mom are doing. Yeah, you come in and uh, ask us how we do it. We're more than happy to tell you how we do it, what we do, what we use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of people have brought their own stuff in for ideas that we've oh. given them and they've taken it home, done it, brought it back and shown us. How nice. Oh, that yeah. must be very gratifying. Or they bring us the pictures from their phone. Yeah. I love that. That yeah. must be very I have gratifying. a gal in Corvallis that she does a lot of the glassware, so does my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're more like uh, totems that you stack with the different colors. And uh, we've really gotten her into that. And her and my mom sit and bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. And, yeah, we have chairs in there that you can sit I and know. chat. I know. <laughs> it feels like you're in somebody's living room. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Yeah, as my mom said, it was built by women for women. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. To keep us busy. Yes. <laughs> As yes. if we're not busy enough. <laughs> well, I am so yeah. grateful to you for doing what you do. Well, thank you. And to like your said, mom and for coming here and sharing with us today. You're more than welcome. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to seeing more. I'm actually going to go buy those garlands for my 4th of July decoration. Shouldn't have said that. So I might beat me to it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Tony, so thank much for, for being here. Thank you for asking me here. This yeah. is very fun. Good, thank good. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with one more guest. Uh, rate buildings on their sustainable uh, construction and then actually the operation of the building afterwards. So not just the way it's constructed, but how it's going to proceed. Exactly. Okay. And so there's, there's different standards. There's LEAS certified, which is the lowest standard, all the way up to the platinum certified, which is the highest standard. 
And uh, at the time, um, there were some very small projects across the country that had that LEED Platinum certification. So when we opened in 2010, we were the largest residence hall in the nation oh here in Monmouth, yay. Oregon. Um, that had that LEED Platinum designation, which was very exciting for us. Um, there's been several buildings, lots of campuses across the nation have kind of jumped on board with this because um, it's really important um, it is. as we build buildings to try to have the least amount of impact on the environment as possible. And uh, so a lot of other campuses have, have opened buildings that, and some of them have been larger than ours um, mm -hmm. now, but we were glad to be one of the, the first. I know it. It's one yeah. more thing that you can be proud of Western about. Absolutely. And so tell me about the, the building and about what you do, and you have a green team, mm -hmm. all sorts of things going on that I didn't know and probably our average viewer doesn't know. Right. About. Yeah, well, you know, we are lucky in that we live in Oregon. And, we are. Um, a lot of our students, um, as they've grown up, they've grown up with recycling. And what we've noticed that is if you make it easy for our students, they'll do it. And mm -hmm. so um, there was many years, uh, I've been here at Western for, for 18 years professionally, and uh, there was many years where, uh, as you might imagine, when we house 1,500 students, a lot of waste is produced. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't always have the best systems for our students. We tried some different things and it didn't necessarily work. And so about five, six years ago, uh, we started an initiative called the Green Team. Um, where we put uh, recyclable recycle stations, central recycle stations throughout the residence halls and also provide recycling stations with each room in the residence halls as well. Oh, wow. To make it as easy as possible for students. So they could do sorting in the room and then they could take it down the hall and do sorting right in their building. And what we found is our recycling went up about 400%. 400%. Uh, yeah, just by, by doing that initiative. And so with that green team that does all the collection of those materials on a daily basis um, throughout the school year, they also do sustainability programming. Um, and then additionally, we uh, about three years ago uh, went through a new programming model for our resident assistants and came up with some core values for our department. And one of them that we thought was really important was a sustainability core value. And so as part of their programming, they have to put on uh, sustainabil sustainability program initiatives each, each term. And so how does that work? I, you know, we're not in the housing world. Yes. <laughs> so tell us what that means. Well, um, our resident assistants, uh, who are resources for the students that live in the residence halls, uh, most of our resident assistants have about 32 residents that they serve. Uh, they have program requirements um, each term to not only to uh, get students to know each other, but also to educate them on different things. And so our core values, um, our program model is based on our core values. And one of them is sustainability. And so uh, they make an effort to provide sustainability programming for their students that teaches them how they can be more sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Ackerman, for example, there are a lot of different features within the building that students have to use intentionally for oh, it to I be see. as most sustainable as possible. Oh, I see. And so they do some programming along those lines. But they also uh, look at regional issues, national issues, world issues on sustainability efforts. So um, they're educating themselves. Yeah. And so do you find, because you've been here for 18 years, uh -huh. Do you find that students um, are becoming more just personally aware, or, or are you finding that kids, I call them, right. students are actually have a personal buy-in and not to, toward recycling or sustainability? Is that changing? I think so. I mean, I think that as we see more in the media um, mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, climate change and sustainability issues, I think our students are becoming more aware. And like I said, I think we're lucky, um, at least as a, a housing professional who has this as a passion of my, of my own and in, in educating students on it, we're lucky that we live in Oregon, which is mm -hmm. you know, a sustainably, ba sustainably based uh, state. And so I think our students are aware and mm -hmm. they want to do the right thing when it comes to protecting mm -hmm. the environment. And so we just have tried, and, and we do this, we, we we evaluate this and try to do it better each year, mm -hmm. make it as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. Because we know if we make it easy, our students want to do this. Right. Um, and so that's kind of been our mission. And so that is something that, you know, the average person here in our community may not know about. Mm -hmm. But I heard about something, you could tell me if I'm right or wrong. Um, I have a passion for taking things that students tend to, uh, not just students, but I notice it more at the end of term around the apartments mm -hmm. around town, just kind of there. In our, my son was one of these. I have a job in California, I have to go. Right, so let's sure. just put all this on the curb, and so we're going to let somebody else deal with it. And um, I really love the idea of taking that stuff and repurposing mm -hmm. it, reusing it, recycling it, giving it away, however you want to say, keeping it out of the landfills. Right. And so um, on move-out day in the dorms, mm -hmm. 
I've heard that some people come on that day, like citizens come and sure. just kind of see what's out there. On the, is that something you guys do intentionally, or did it just happen that way? It, it just it just kind of happened that way. And so what we've done in response to that to be more intentional is because you know obviously uh, when you have you know fit up to fifteen hundred students living in the residence halls, they produce not only a lot of waste, but um, they accumulate a lot of things right. over the year. like we all do. Exactly. <laughs> and at the end of the year, not only do we see them getting rid of things that can be reused mm -hmm. um, and that are really good condition, mm -hmm. sometimes almost new condition, mm -hmm. um, we don't want them to throw those things away. Uh, and we also find that that is actually our largest uh, volume week in recycling, too, because students, even though they have the in-room um, recycling stations, they also tend to hold some of those things in those yes. rooms. And so yes. we're busy in that regard and that week as well. And none of us have ever let the trash fill no, up, right? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, so one of the things that we started doing three, three years ago in conjunction um, with Kevin Hughes in the physical plant um, is we contacted Union Gospel Mission. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have put collection bins uh, throughout uh, the, the residence halls during that final week and have encouraged our students through education and also visibility to uh, donate their, their lightly used or, or re reusable items that um, you know, could anywhere be from food, clothing, appliances, um, all sorts of things. And um, Kevin is fantastic and he uh, personally goes around uh, each day during that week and collects that with his family and other people from the physical plant. And I just uh, spoke with him yesterday and it, we were able to collect 2,500 pounds of reusable items that we were able to give to the Union Gospel Mission. 2,500 pounds yeah. because of Kevin Hughes. Yes, I mean, he's, he's a big, he's he a big portion of that. He's yeah. an amazing person. He is. And uh, works here at Western mm -hmm. and that is not his job. To, to collect? No. No, he works no. at the physical plant and keeps he things does. going and looking good. On the grounds, yes. Right? They look wonderful, right. beautiful. But he just wanted to do that with his family. Yeah, well, and his family have a, has a heart for people. He has a heart for people. And, uh, you know, obviously we want to support that initiative. Um, and to have those items that are perfectly good and yeah. usable, that our students don't want anymore for right. one reason or the other, it's a shame to have those items thrown away. And then, um, you know, so we ask the students to put them in the collection bins. And then what you mentioned, sometimes not everything gets into the collection mm -hmm. bins. And we do have folks who come through and sometimes look at what students have left behind and take those things. And, uh, you know, we don't mind so much because we don't want them to go to the landfill because uh, enough stuff is already going. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're so trying to do we're trying to do the best we can. Oh, you're doing yeah. a wonderful job. <laughs> I'm so impressed. When I when I sought to do this series on the show here um, and talk to people about how they're, I'm I'm just amazed at how many people in our community. Um, are doing things to recapture right. and, and to me it comes out of a sense of gratitude yeah. just I'm grateful that I have things and I'm not just gonna ditch them sure oh it's just wonderful yeah absolutely and so you don't really promote the idea of people coming by and getting stuff like no because they don't put furniture and stuff out there no. or if they do you guys probably take it someplace and well and and the thing is with the residence halls almost all of our our um, rooms are furnished. Right. So not, not a lot of students are bringing actual furniture. So we don't get a lot of furniture dumps. Mm -hmm. I see more of the furniture like being left on the side of the road around the community yes. from our apartments and stuff. <laughs> That's true. And you know, I think our students are pretty good about that too. They just put a sign that says free. They and do. Then it's <laughs> wonderful. Come by it's and wonderful. pick those things up. Um, but yeah, so we don't see a lot of furniture, but more like appliances, um, you know, computer, computer monitors, mm -hmm. sometimes televisions, but a lot of clothes, um, food, you know, students didn't eat all their food during the school year. And so all of those things, the Union Gospel Mission can use. Isn't and, that you pens, know, pencils, mm -hmm. yeah, school supplies, trays, yeah, school supplies, all that, all sort that of stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? It is. That it's, is just a important. wonderful thing that y'all are doing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. No, I appreciate <laughs> it so much. And the fact that Kevin just did that on his own yeah. with his family. It yeah. just shows you how people really do care. Absolutely. They do care about the broader picture here. Because that's a busy time for you guys. It is. It's you could be doing the, lots of other things besides recapturing uh, items. Right. Besides move in, um, move out is one of our busiest times for sure. And is Ackerman Hall something that uh, do you offer tours of that, or can the public see that building? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, we uh, the admissions office does uh, tours of that building and our other residence hall facilities on a daily basis mm -hmm. um, throughout the year. 
And uh, you know, if there's any folks who are interested in seeing some of the more sustainable, sustainable features of the building, uh, I've probably given over 200 tours. Have you really? <laughs> and I love that building. I was on the, the project team and um, so really learned a lot about uh, how you can really do things the right way and reduce um, the impact we have on Earth when we're building a building. Because there's and costs so many too, right? and costs. You reduce well, it reduces the operational right. cost. There's a little bit of upfront cost right. that costs more mm -hmm. um, when you're building a building like that, but the operational costs uh, over the, the lifetime of the building, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll make up that, right. that cost. And even if you don't know all of this stuff, when you just, when I walk in that building, it's it feels beautiful. like I'm in a lodge or it smells yeah. like, uh, and because of the window space, uh -huh. that grove, that yeah. it's like you're in another place. Yeah. Well, and, you know, one of, some of the things that were really important when we built that building, not only for sustainable features, but the livability features, is we made the windows of that building much larger. Because mm -hmm. the more light that you can capture from the most sustainable light source on Earth, the sun, <laughs> uh, the less you have to actually produce right. in the building. Um, and then also, uh, there was a lot of wood that uh, we had to we had to cut down a number of trees in mm -hmm. the area that we built, but we reused all of that wood back in the building. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk in the building, one of the things you'll all see, up, right? yeah, one of the things you'll see is a lot of wood, and um, you know not all of it because we used much more wood than we had actually on site, but a good majority of it on the first floor actually came from the site, and that we were able to reuse it. That smells like a lot. Yeah. It smells great. Yeah. And the big, I noticed the, the coffee tables are right. just Those big are, cuts of wood. Yep, they're, stu they're um, stump tables um, from stumps from around campus. Isn't that uh, amazing? Yeah. One of the other really, the, probably one of the major sustainable features of the building is it has a rainwater capturing system. And so any rain, and since we got a lot of rain in mm -hmm. Oregon, it's, it's uh, advantageous. Any rain that happens on the site and is collected on the roof it uh, is filtered um, and is stored in a 35,000 gallon tank underneath mm -hmm. the site. And then we use all of that water uh, to flush our toilets. All of that water yep. to flush toilets. Mm -hmm. <gasps> that's amazing. Yep. Now and there's something I didn't know. That's right. And so we, uh, on, uh, on average a year, we, we save about uh, two Olympic sized swimming pools of water just by using what falls out of the sky. Now that makes it worth it right yep. there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Yep. That is amazing. Now, you used to be a Monmouth City Councilman. Is I that did. Right? Mm -hmm. I was on City Council for six years. And you, are you from Monmouth? I'm not. I actually grew up in uh, Gresham, Oregon, mm -hmm. and then I came to Western uh, as a student in 1991, and then they haven't been able to get rid of me. We're glad. <laughs> We're so grateful. And you stayed like many wonderful yeah. people do, yeah, myself It's a great included. place, yeah. You come here for Western, and yeah. you end up seeing how great it is, the community here Absolutely. in Monmouth and Independence, and you just want to stay. Uh -huh. So good. And mm -hmm. you're now in your second phase of acting. Yes. Uh, when I was in high school, I did a lot of theater. And um, when I came to college, I thought that would be a natural thing that I did. But for, for one reason or other, I, I got involved with, with housing as an undergraduate. And there wasn't a lot of time to do other things. And so with that busy schedule, it kind of just slipped. And then last year, I was like, you know what? I want to try this again. And um, I've been lucky enough to be cast in three productions uh, since last year, and I'm currently in one um, down in Lebanon, uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. So I love that. And like, that takes place in Oregon, right? What's that? The story yeah, it, takes it is. Place it's, in it's set in Oregon country, so um, I'm not sure if it's actual Oregon. We might be a little uh, uh, more south in the actual show, but it's set in the 1850s in Oregon country. Yeah. And uh, it's the first musical I've been since I was 17 years old, so it's... Uh, Retuning my voice. That's but. inspiring. <laughs> I love fun. that. And I'm sure many people yeah. just love that Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, yeah. the whole story yeah. and the concept. So congratulations Thank on you. doing that, too. I, I think I get the feeling that you're one of those overachievers that make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, don't, you don't even don't realize know. you're an overachiever. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. From coming from one who isn't. All right. Uh, no, no. Thank you very much uh -huh. for being with us today. And you're thanks welcome. for sharing all this wonderful news about what's going on mm -hmm. in the housing uh, life of Western Oregon University. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope that you have enjoyed and uh, learned from the things that you heard from these fabulous guests we've had with us today. If you yourself are someone interested in repurposing things, recycling things, or have a story you'd like to tell or share, you can find Polk Salad on Facebook. Like us, share with us, and get in touch, and we will be sure to reach out to you and get your story and uh, 
find out about more and more what's going on out there in the area of taking care of things. For me, ultimately, what we're talking about here is gratitude, being grateful for what we have, and uh, the act of gratitude leads us to reuse, repurpose, and recycle. And so while you're continuing to do that, um, have a great time doing it. Thank you for being with us today. And until next time, I will see you around town. Thank you.